Hello, welcome to Wake Up To Money. In an exclusive interview, I've been speaking to the boss of Microsoft, who says the UK is now no longer the place to do business. There's a clear message here. The European Union is a more attractive place to start a business if you want someday to sell it than the United Kingdom. This is after the British competition regulator said Microsoft was not allowed to buy the massive American gaming developer Activision Blizzard for $70 billion. We'll hear more from the boss there. We'll get more reaction on the programme as well. Also, the new boss of the CBI starts work today. We'll hear from her and find out what the business world wants to see from the lobby group. And later on, the government's going to announce new plans for gambling companies. We'll have a look at what's expected. Wake up to money with Sean Farrington. Uh, very good morning to you. Where are we at? It's Thursday morning, the 27th of April. And of course, it's just coming up to five past five. Wake up to money on Five Live. Thank you so much for being with us. 85058. If you would like to get in touch this morning, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on the comments of the Microsoft boss. The decisions made in the gaming world. What, what's going on in the gaming industry now? It's it's one of those industries that has grown so fast in recent years. It's absolutely blockbuster globally. People will know it gaming in their own households, on their own smartphones, trying to handle their kids' new gaming habits as they grow as well. And it is big business. And Microsoft won a bit of a bigger chunk of that business, it seems. It already owns 60 to 70% of the, of the gaming market. It already has that share of it. Uh, of course, if you're not familiar with Microsoft, it's got Windows. Remember that thing? I'm still using it on my computers this morning. But felt like it was a, a, a more crucial part of our infrastructure back in the day, but it still really is, isn't it? It's still the leading PC operating system. We might not get so excited about the new versions as they roll out, but massive footprint on on the world right now. It's got a cloud computing infrastructure as well. That is that is one of the big money makers for the company. We've been talking about that this week for Microsoft, Azure, Xbox, cloud gaming as well. So there, there's the footprint. Um, but they want a chunk of the gaming market, an even bigger one, the $69 billion proposed takeover of the massive developer Activision Blizzard would have given Microsoft, and who knows, one day it still might, Those massive hits in the gaming world like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush as well. Don't laugh, it's still big business. But the UK's Competition and Markets Authority has dealt a blow to these plans. So we're going to get into this a little bit now. We're going to hear from the president of Microsoft in a moment. I've been speaking to him about about the... um, I've been speaking to him about this deal. Uh, The regulator itself said the deal could alter the future of the fast-growing cloud gaming market, leading to reduced innovation and less choice for UK gamers. It didn't think it was a good decision for British consumers. So I caught up with Brad Smith, the vice chair and president of Microsoft, and I asked for his reaction to this decision. We're, of course, very disappointed about the CMA's decision, but more than that, unfortunately, I think it's bad for Britain. The business community, the investment community, and the technology sector around the world have been following this case. And the strong message the CMA has sent is not just to surprise everyone who fully expected this acquisition to be approved, but to send a message that I think will discourage innovation and investment in the United Kingdom. And I think in that sense, the impact of this decision is far broader than on Microsoft or this acquisition alone. What is the impact on the UK? I think the impact on the UK, unfortunately, is to shake the confidence among the business community in the UK and the CMA as a regulatory agency. Uh, When we study the decision, In part, it's based on what we feel is such a flawed or just faulty understanding of the market. It's all about a potential concern about what can become the cloud streaming of games, just like you see the streaming of movies on a network like Netflix. But this business is so small today that Microsoft can't even stream games to more than 5,000 people at a time in the entirety of the United Kingdom. And so for regulators to step in and seek to torpedo a $68 billion global transaction out of a concern 
about a part of the business that is so small and to reject so many proposals to try to address their concerns, I think it leaves people worried and it leaves people thinking that actually the process in Brussels worked far better than what we're now addressing in London. Is your whole view of the British tech industry changed by this one decision by a single regulator? Microsoft has been in the United Kingdom for 40 years, and we play a vital role, not just supporting businesses and nonprofits, but even defending the nation from cybersecurity threats. But this decision, I have to say, is probably the darkest day in our four decades in Britain. It does more to shake our confidence in the future of the opportunity to grow a technology business in Britain than we've ever confronted before. And will it therefore affect Microsoft's decisions about investments in the UK? It certainly will not help. I always think when bad news arrives, one should pause and be thoughtful. But in part, it's extremely disappointing and even frustrating. Frustrating in part because just two weeks ago, we thought we had answered every question that the CMA panel had put to us. And we specifically said, if you have any other questions or if you have any other concerns, please let us know. We want to address them. And they went silent. We heard nothing from them. This is not the way regulators in Brussels work with companies. You have more of a conversation. And so I think investments flow to places where people have confidence in the way laws and regulations work. And for all of us who had some hope that post-Brexit, the UK would construct a structure that would even be more flexible, that would be better for investment, better for technology, we're now finding that the opposite appears to be true. You said that the CMA has scuppered this huge global deal, but they're far from the only major regulator concerned with this. It could very well be in the coming weeks. The American regulator may say it does not want this deal to go ahead. The FTC in the US raised issues and we've been working to address them. But in the meantime, governments around the world have approved this deal. We've had a lengthy process with the European Commission in Brussels. We submitted to the European Commission proposals to address the same issues that have arisen in London. And what is most striking to me is that the English Channel has never seemed wider in terms of Europe as a continent being attractive to investment, Brussels as a place where one can sit down and actually have a conversation with the regulators who are accountable to the elected leaders and the difference we now confront in London, where we have regulators who are not only unelected, but unaccountable and now making decisions that just feel fundamentally unwise. And of course, that is your view. At Microsoft, you wanted the deal to go through. But when, as the regulator has laid out, you have a 60 to 70 percent share of the cloud gaming market, hugely dominant already, in a market that is sort of just starting out, really, given the the whole life length of lifetime that it's had already. Is it not best for consumers to say, well, hang on, let this market develop naturally. We don't want another huge tech monopoly in a burgeoning industry where we could have more innovation and some new names involved. There will be plenty of new names. I think what's unfortunate is this. First, almost every aspect of the numeric and factual analysis from the market share estimate to the size of the market to just an understanding of how the cloud technology works is, in our view, fundamentally flawed and incorrect. But second, the whole basis for this concern is the possibility that Microsoft would buy a gaming studio and not make the games that it's buying available on alternative cloud streaming services. And yet we have already signed contracts to make these games available on alternative services. They're not available today. We offered to commit to a 10 year binding undertaking to the CMA as we have in Brussels, Hmm. that we would commit 
and provide these games for a decade on alternative you, services. You say there would be new names. There would, there would always be new names. But what you want is that on Microsoft's terms, on Microsoft's platforms. Not at all. What Microsoft offered to the CMA was a commitment that these very games we are acquiring would be available from services that are not run by Microsoft. They're not sold by Microsoft. They would be available on other computer operating systems and other devices, not those from Microsoft. We think that's good business because that's how the games would be distributed as broadly as possible. That's good for gamers. It's good for so consumers. You, so you would like innovation to be regulated? No, I would like innovation to go forward with appropriate guardrails. But the guardrails need to allow innovation to advance. And one of the ways that innovation advances is that companies are born and then they have the opportunity to merge and come together. That's how the business around the world tends to flourish. I don't think people are going to want to start a company in a country that will then have regulators who will stop them from selling it to another company if the day arrives when that is the most appropriate thing for them to do. There's a clear message here. The European Union is a more attractive place to start a business if you want someday to sell it than the United Kingdom. Do you think the European Union will approve this deal? I am optimistic that the European Commission will continue to go forward as it has signaled in recent weeks and months that it will regard the very promises that the CMA has rejected as far more appropriate. It's all about being pragmatic. Don't we want regulators to be pragmatic? Don't we want regulators to actually talk to the people they're regulating? Don't we want regulators to look for solutions rather than reasons to block people from moving forward? And that is something we've heard from from you and Microsoft for many years now about, you know, Microsoft has wanted to be part of that conversation with regulation. Isn't this just what happens if you want more regulation, that decisions are just not going to go your way because the British regulator thinks this is not in the interest of, of consumers here in the UK? There's a lot of big tech dominance in so much of our lives, and maybe... This could be limited in this area for now while the market grows. I don't think the consumers of Britain benefit by stopping access to more games on more platforms through more services. And that is exactly what we have offered to do. But, but you would have that, some exclusivity in there, though. There's a good chance with time. Yeah, we've seen it with Netflix. We see it with all those streaming platforms. We've seen it with Microsoft with some gaming parts of your business where you say, actually, we're going to keep that just for our platform and not necessarily let rival platforms have that game. But the key thing in this transaction and in this process is that Microsoft offered to provide these games to other services on a non-exclusive basis. And there's something more than that. It's bigger than that. It's the process. It's the fact that we asked if there were other problems so we could understand them and offer a solution. Will we have regulators that seek solutions? Will we have a business climate that invites innovation? Or will we just have communication that comes to a halt and regulators who refuse to listen? That's not good for anyone. And that, in my view, is what happened here. Final question for you. Do you have a message for the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak? I think that if the government of the United Kingdom wants to bring in investment, if it wants to create jobs, and if it wants to make the United Kingdom a home where technology is not only going to flourish, but be created, that it needs to look hard at the role of the CMA, this regulatory structure in the United Kingdom, this transaction, and the message that the United Kingdom has just sent to the world. Because I can tell you, that while I may have a point of view that is based in part on an interest that our company has, I have already heard from a great many around the world. People are shocked, people are disappointed, and people's confidence in technology in the United Kingdom has been severely shaken. 
Brad Smith there, the president of Microsoft, with some very strong words on the back of the regulator here in the UK, the competition regulator, blocking Microsoft's desires to take over the massive gaming developer Activision Blizzard. That's